So the main important thing, guys, is just remembering I, I've given you, for these problems, I've given you guys two equations, are what we call our exponential equations. And in this format, we have y equals a times b to the x. Or you can think about them as transformations, but there's no actually no transformations in here, right? Do you guys agree I do not have any minus h or plus k? Do you guys see that? I know, I do have that. But I'm saying there's no h and k. Yeah. So I'm just going to erase those. So therefore, I know to graph this, I'm not going to be shifting my graph left or right, nor am I not going to be shifting up or down, because I don't have an h and a k. Does everybody agree with that? OK. Now, again, we look at this. We have two, two letters. We have a and the b. Now remember, there's a difference in how they affected the graph. The b was what we called the base of our power. And so you could say that b, in this case, is going to be 5. And then a is what's going to be multiplied in front. Well, we don't have another number in front of a. So therefore, we can assume pressing that a is going to be, thank you, exactly, 1. All right. Now, what did a tell us about the graph? Well, if you remember, in our parent graph, a represented the y-intercept. So therefore, all I asked you guys to do, all I wanted you guys to do was just to sketch the graph using one point. Well, the best and easiest point to use would be the y-intercept because that's just a, right? So there's my point, 0, 1. Now, I'm doing this dashed line because I'm, I'm not done with the graph yet. Um, the next thing is we need to understand what this negative x does or what that negative up top does. Now, do you guys agree that negative is in the, that's a power, right? So that would be what we call contained inside of the function. Because there's two different negatives that we could have. And I'll answer you guys this, or I'll ask you guys, pose this question. If I had y equals negative <coughs> x squared, did anybody remember what reflected, what this was a reflection about for a quadratic? x-axis, right? That's being a negative being multiplied on the outside. So if I wanted to represent uh, multiplying a negative inside the function, it would look like this. I'd put it inside of the function. Oops, I'm sorry. It's inside of the function. Does everybody see how that's inside of the function? That's what's being squared. So if ref multiplying by negative outside reflects over the x-axis, multiplying by negative inside reflects about the y-axis. Well. To write this as a negative outside, it would look like this. To write it as a multiplying by a negative inside, it looks like that. Do you guys see the difference of where the negatives are placed? Right? So this would multiply by reflect on the x-axis. When multiplying by a negative on the inside of the function, that's going to reflect on the y-axis. So basically, what I'm going to do is just reflect this graph about the y-axis. Now, one other thing you should make sure you guys are aware of, and what I do appreciate when you guys are graphing, is this, a, is this the only thing on the graph? Is this what makes up the graph? Is this it? There's one more thing that we added about the graph. The asymptote. asymptote. So especially when you guys are doing transformations like the next problem, it's really, really important to make sure you guys have that asymptote. Because that tells you, again, that, ref, that drives into you, oh, this graph approaches the asymptote, right? It's not going to go below my asymptote y equals 0. And that's really important to understand, especially when you're talking about domain range. Yes, Denise? So, I'll get to you. Yes. How do you know what direction the line is going? Which one? The, the red line. Well, I mean the reflection or originally the black graph? Like, I don't know. I don't get how do you know like, which side it goes to? You mean the black graph? Well, that was in your original notes. I said, when we talked about our original graph, remember we talked about a growth graph? And we talked about a decay graph. And I guess I probably could have gone over those again. Decay gra growth graph looked like this. Decay graph looked like this. And what the difference was, they were both y equals b to the x, or a times b to the x. Do you remember the difference on how we determined if it was growth or decay? Does anybody remember? B, right. So when B is greater than 1, it looks like this. When B is greater than 0, but less than 1, it goes in that format. Okay. And actually, if you were to rewrite this, what is really f to the negative x power? 
This, in reality, ladies and gentlemen, is this. Do you guys actually see how that's 1 fifth, really? So that's why that'd be a decay. So that's why this graph looks like a decay, or that's why this graph is a decay. Friend of your question. Um, what did you do with the 5? Because I see the point is like 0 and 1. So what happens to the 5? So if you guys remember, maybe I'll, I'll whip up the com um, calc uh, computer again. If this was, let's say, b, this was y equals 2 to the x. What happened when I did y equals 5 to the x? Do you guys remember? What that did was that just increased how fast the graph increased. But it didn't change the x-intercept at all. All it did was just in kind of increased the value. So I wasn't looking for you guys to be plotting points. Again, all I wanted you guys to do was just sketch the graph, basically just making sure you guys know what the transformations are. However, if you wanted to find the exact points on the graph, what, would you, what could you simply use? Starts with a T and rhymes with table. You could just create a table, right? Plug in, you know, plug in negative one, plug in one, and you could create your own graph. But I didn't want you guys to get that detailed. I just wanted you to sketch using one point based on what the graph looks like. So did this graph look like this? I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe it looks more like this. You know? I mean, I, I didn't want I didn't need you guys to be exact. I more the more the importance of this assignment was really just for you guys to get used to what does the graph look like. And then what are the transformations? And that was it. I wasn't, I'm not looking for you guys to be like 100% accurate on the graph.